Hi there, this is a piece of audio content that is only available in full over at patreon.com slash elwoodcitylimits. We wanted to give you a little bit of a preview to show you what you might be missing out on. You can join us for as little as $1 under the pay what you want model at patreon.com slash elwoodcitylimits and get access to over dozens of hours of content, including every episode of For the Kids, a PBS Kids podcast. We appreciate you listening, whether you're a patron or whether you're listening on the free feed. You're under no obligation to join, and thank you very much for checking out this preview. But if you'd like to know what these episodes and extra content sounds like, here's a little bit of a sneak peek. Yes, it's a, the Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball anime manga, whichever, is that excellent bridge because Dragon Ball Z is, you know what Dragon Ball Z is. You're listening to this, you know what, you know what that is, even just the name. Like, to, like I wrote here, my summary of it, I was like, how do I sum up how popular the show is? I wrote, it was embraced worldwide for its presentation and elevation of shonen manga tropes by a generation of viewers growing up with anime. And even then, I think it's underselling it. Because when you get into Dragon Ball Z, then Akira Toriyama becomes legend, essentially. Like, Dragon Ball, it's on its own, is fantastic. Like, it's such a wonderful adventure story and i think that it's accessible to everybody whereas dbz i think a lot of it you i mean you could argue that its appeal is a bit more limited because it is more battle focused but the people who respond to it respond to it so strongly and i'm one of those people like uh so when i discovered dragon ball z it became like a special interest of mine to the point that when so when i was growing up we had we i think we got the internet in maybe 96 or 97, and I wanted so much more of Dragon Ball Z because the release schedule in Canada was so staggered. Even though it was already over in Japan, it was still like coming out in dribs and drabs, and I just needed more. So I would go on to, not, not Google, but like a search engine. So web crawler or Lycos. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I would just put in Dragon Ball Z pictures and then I would print them off on my parents' color printer and put them in a binder so I could look at them. It, it's like, and I think that that is not, it's not just the appeal of the show, but it's just like, that's how I got all of this like official artwork that's not strictly like screen caps from the show, but like all of this wonderful art, just artwork in you know this little binder these you know and it's one of those things where it's like when you look at a an image online it'll show like oh here's the cropped image in the corner and the rest of the page is white and that's how i would print them out so it's like it's they're not full size or anything but i just couldn't get enough of the way that show looks i made little fan art of dragon ball z when i was a kid because i love the way it looks like those character designs oh my god they're like immediately instantly iconic not to mention you yeah, know, just concepts from the show, like the idea of going Super Saiyan, like all of the, God, like it's hard to know where to even start with this. So, well, so the idea, something that I I realized in watching this, uh, is uh, there's a lot of new context I have this year because, uh, longtime ECL listeners will know I've I've embarked upon my year of watching Chinese movies. Yes, and I've been watching a lot of Hong Kong action movies, and I think a lot of the things that you know, I used to think were distinct to Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z growing mm. up, or even just anime growing up, I'm realizing actually have their roots in kind of Chinese action cinema. Um, and I, I think a lot of people who are dig anime or dig Shonen Battle would they would do well to watch some of these 70s kung fu movies because even the the idea of someone kind of charging up their key uh and then doing a, a a kind of a slight movement and it has more impact right that's very bruce lee yes um and you know bruce lee is inspired by uh kind of the movies that came before him you know i was watching uh just the idea that people have like specific attacks and they say them out loud while they're doing them that's so kung fu cinema that's so kind of the five deadly venoms and and you know enter the 36 chambers right yeah and so i'm kind of returning to this stuff with a new lens because it all seems you know when you're only used to uh western cartoons you're only used to spongebob fairly odd parents all this stuff feels like it came from an alien planet uh not to do orientalism or anything but it's just we have no reference point right because i feel like 
those movies and those concepts didn't have the same penetration in the early 2000s in the West, maybe in the 70s. I know those Bruce Lee movies were huge, but for our generation, I feel like I did not have a familiarity with that stuff. And so um, my first exposure to this kind of whole uh, medium or this whole kind of, for lack of a better term, uh, cinematic language of Kung Fu cinema uh, was Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z. And so kind of returning to it now, I'm like, oh yeah, this is so heavily influenced uh, uh, by the language of those movies. Uh, and it's it's kind of been my Rosetta Stone, so to speak, to kind of understanding <laughs> that world. It's funny you talk about influence because, yeah, like I talked about before, we live now in a culture where anime is so much more ubiquitous and available than it used to be, not just in terms of you being able to watch it, but also people acknowledging the impact that anime has had in their lives, including people that work in animation today. Just as like a splinter example, I've been watching uh, episodes of Steven Universe like for the first time. Like I just watched the first few and you can immediately tell, even just watching the episode of Dragon Ball today, I was like, oh, that's where Steven Universe got this from. Or you watch a different show, and it's like, that's where they got this from, and it's from Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z. And so that all passes along in terms of the influences, but you're right, it's hard to believe that something as that something like Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z could come from somewhere in our realm of understanding and not just be something wholly original because that's how it felt discovering it for the first time um and not something that actually is drawing on older influences that we weren't aware of okay that's gonna do it for now but we will see you next time on elwood city limits or at patreon.com slash elwood city limits if you decide to join us thank you very much and have a great week